put in these, these heuristics, mm -hmm. the fact is that almost everything that everything that they've come across that has install, setup, or update in the name, and there's some deeper heuristics that actually look inside the image, that all of those are indeed system-wide installation packages that do need admin rights, and so it gets it right. Probably, you know, I'll just be safe and say 99.9% .9 of the time. Cool. The heuristic is correct. Now, um, there's other security researchers like uh, that have pointed out that you that the shield uh, or the UI dialog that you get when you try to elevate something when when mm -hmm. something wants admin rights and you get this user account control pop-up dialog box that says application XYZ wants admin rights and it. If it's a Windows component, it gets a blue stripe across the dialog box, kind of as a, hey, this is, let me give you an idea. The blue means that it's a Windows thing okay. that you're giving admin rights to. And they pointed out with a certain Windows component that you could pass in a command line that would cause it to load some other code. And, then, hmm. and he, the argument was that the blue doesn't really mean Windows anymore. It means because you're actually starting other code, too. And my blog post kind of addresses that in, with the general sure. uh, message that, that when you elevate something, when you're running in a standard user account, which can either be true standard user or in a mode called admin approval mode, mm -hmm. where you get the yes, no on the elevation dialog instead of the give me admin credentials, Good which point. you get from standard user, yep. that uh, the elevation is not a security boundary. It's a convenience. And it's a convenience that was put into the system because we want to get people to run a standard user because it's okay. kind of a feedback loop. If you uh, don't have people running a standard user, then ISVs aren't going to write programs for people to run a standard user. And users aren't going to run, run a standard user. Sure. We want to have people running a standard user because they, uh, that has lots of goodness. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, they can't you can't accidentally go and mess with system configuration. With user account control, even if you're an admin, you get told, hey, the thing you're about to do through that elevation dialog is going to potentially, it's going to change system configuration or yeah. modify it. So, you know, that's uh, kind of a mess warning to you or heads up to you that you're going to do something that could potentially impact the stability of the whole machine. Or, Absolutely. Uh, then malware can't mess with the system state without it getting elevated like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it opens the door with the Vista user account control technologies like virtualization that John probably talked about. Absolutely. To getting legacy applications to run a standard user that weren't written for standard user environments and mm -hmm. getting people into being able to run a standard user uh, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. In the home environment, There's you get children, for example, on shared PCs that you can have running a standard user all the time. Yep. In corporate environments with, that are in managed where their software is being deployed to them, you can have now corporate users that are running a standard user all the time, mm -hmm. and that's going to minimize help desk calls. And absolutely. I sound like a marketing message at this point. But no, but it's true. But yeah, it's absolutely true. And the, the elevations were put in the system because without them, mm -hmm. you're going to have users that are going to want to do admin things, like install software, open port on the firewall. and if you had them switch to an admin account, if you said, oh, I'm going to put you in a standard user account, mm -hmm. oh, but if you want to do one of those admin type things, you're going to need to switch out, switch back into the admin account to do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say, well, that's kind of onerous. I don't yeah. want to do that. Totally. So I'm just going to run in the admin account all the time, and there's no progress then. Yeah. That ISVs look at the situation, they're running as admins all the time, mm -hmm. users are running as admin, and, you know, so. Yeah. The elevations are a convenience, which gets people to run a standard user. Even if you're an admin, you're really, all your stuff's running a standard user unless you agree to one of those elevations. Absolutely. And, and that's really critically important it to is. stress. That, I mean, even if you are, like you're saying, if you're running in, what is it called? Admin Elevated, approval mode. Admin approval mode, you're still running a standard user yep. for your process context. Yeah. Nothing's going to be able to, you're, you're still a standard user. You're still a standard user. If you never elevate, you're running, you're equivalent to standard user. Excellent. Now, if you elevate, you're basically saying the convenience of me elevating outweighs me mm -hmm. switching to a different account and doing the admin operation. Yes. 
or the inconvenience, let me say. Sure, and you know, at home, hopefully your kids don't know the administrator password of right. the machine. Right, they shouldn't, and the parent yeah. comes over and can type in the admin password the for smart those. ones will, yeah. because they'll know that they can override parental controls and various other things. Um, Maybe. Ac well, no, actually, they, <laughs> well, the elevation is, like I said, is not a security boundary, so they could, Good point. They could figure it out, right? If the parent comes over and does uh, one of these over-the-shoulder elevations, and the child's like super uber hacker, uh -huh. or they could figure out how to steal the admin parent's credentials uh, through a fake over-the-shoulder dialog box, or malware could do it. Sure. Uh, and again, it's a, one of these trade-offs of security versus convenience. And yes. built into the system, there's a switch you can flip that says uh, to for the parent to even get to that admin approval, that over-the-shoulder dialog box, they've got to hit control delete. Excellent. And when they do that, malware can't then spoof the, that, that keyboard sequence or intercept it. And so that gives the parent an assurance that malware is not intercepting their credentials. Mm -hmm. So that's one level of, of they want to be more secure, trade off a little convenience, they can go configure that. So let me just interject because this, this is confusing in the sense that one of the reasons that, that the shell team created uh, the dead desktop, if you will, yeah. which is what happens when you get a prompt. It's just a snapshot of the desktop plus some UI that you can interact with on another desktop, uh -huh. right? Yep. That, I thought the idea behind that was there's no way to spoof that. There's, well, there's no, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, well, uh, let me clarify. Sure, that's right. Uh, because spoof, uh, the, the reason that it goes to a separate desktop and the definition of spoof in the context that you're using it yeah. for why the rationale for why switch it to diff different desktop is that malware, if it happens to be on the machine, can't overlay the dialog box and make it look different. Like okay. it can't put a window on top of that blue bar and make it, or an orange bar, that, which is what you get when you run something that's not signed by somebody you trust or mm -hmm. not digitally signed. Okay. They can't put a blue bar on top of it and make it look like it's like a Windows component, or, and change the put a, something over the description that makes it look like it's a Windows component, and change the cursor so that when you're moving the cursor out and you're pressing the, you think you're pressing the cancel, it's really pressing the continue okay. button, right? <laughs> so they can't do those things. Understood. When because that desktop, separate desktop, is inaccessible to the malware. So that's the kind of spoofing that that they're talking about when yeah, okay. the separate desktop is preventing. Now for over the shoulder. Elevations. That's well, the time. What is an over the shoulder? Yeah, an over the shoulder. The, so there's, if you're really running a standard user with mm -hmm. user account control turned on and you run something that requests admin rights, then you switch to that separate desktop with the faded background. The dialog box has the coloration and the description of what asking for the elevation. The fact that it's over the shoulder means you're being, uh, to grant the elevation, you need to provide admin credentials. Okay. So the username and password for an admin account. Got it. And the scenario where people are running a standard user and they're going to want to elevate and have somebody come and give admin credentials is the most common scenario. We'll see that in Vista is in the home mm -hmm. on a shared PC or a PC that's the child's PC, mm -hmm. which is the parent wants to make sure stays clean from an admin point of view. The child is running as a standard user. Now they go and want to install a game and the game requires elevation. They're going to get the elevation dialog box. The parent then has two options. They can log into an admin account and install the game from there, mm -hmm. or if they want it, which is more secure, mm -hmm. potentially, uh, or they can grant their admin rights to the game installer right there. The child gets the over-the-shoulder elevation dialog box, calls the parent to, over and says, I want to install this game, mm -hmm. and the parent types in their credentials over the child's shoulder. So Got that's it. over the shoulder. Excellent. So. What the, the note to parents out there is have the child go get some Kool-Aid or leave yeah. the room. Yeah, so and they're not watching the Especially if, you're caught, if, if, you, if you think you have a hacker for a child. Yeah. Okay. Now, and then there's Good, Better, Best, which <laughs> if you go read Jim's blog, he talked about this. His, one of Jim Walton's last blog posts was about security versus convenience. Mm -hmm. And to, if you really don't trust the child or trust that they've run that the stuff that they've run that they might be infected with malware that's aware, Vista, you know, aware, mm -hmm. then you're going to want to go turn on that control out delete option too because that's the kind of spoof, the kind of spoof that that prevents is malware, if it's on the machine, waiting for the child to run something that's going to request admin rights like the game installer, mm -hmm. intercept that, 
which it can do because it's running in the child's account, and then throw up a, dialogue, a screen that looks like the secure desktop that has the faded background and a dialog box that looks like the UAC dialog box. Hmm. Because then the parent comes over, types in their credentials,